Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual science classroom with your teacher, da, teacher Daryl Del Mundo. And right now, we are at the last week of our quarter number three, which is our week number seven. So before we proceed, let us have a short trailer for this morning. Okay, thank you so much. And for our secretary, kindly check how many boys and how many girls do we have today. Then later on, you will send it to our group chat. Okay, do not forget it. And for week number seven, for the third quarter, now we are going to deal about this topic. So we are going to discuss about charges, charging, and charge. Okay, so basically the supplementary learning materials will help us to learn about atom and its charges. For lesson number two, the different types of charging. And for us to have a short background or a review for this topic, all you have to do is to answer this looking back section. So what you see on the right is a model of an atom, the basic unit of an element. So can you write what is described with what you see here? So all you have to do is to observe this picture here on your right. So if you are watching this video, this is your right side look at the illustration here so it's basically an uh, illustration of an illustration of an atom so for example number one do you see the central figure in an atom of course the answer is yes for number two what do you call the central figure so do you have anything in your mind that you recall when you were in grade school like in elementary what do you call the central figure of the atom this is known as the nucleus. So uh, I give you already the answer. So we have to do it to answer the rest. Okay. But for lesson number one, we are going to talk about atom and its charges. Actually, you already know about this one. But we are going to deepen your understanding about this topic. As a brief introduction, this is an atom. And an atom is the basic unit of an element composed of protons, neutrons that are heavier than electrons. The protons and neutrons combine and form the nucleus of the atom. So when we are talking about the nucleus, it is the center, okay, the center of the atom. And the electrons are extremely lightweight and exist in a cloud orbiting the nucleus. So because they are very light or mataan, they are the ones who are moving around the nucleus of the atom. Para siya nagkakaroon ng cloud-like structure because of its movement. So these particles carry with them the basic property of matter called electric charge. So lahat ng mga particles na yan ng atom ay may charge tayong tinatawag. Those are the electric charge. Either positive or negative that governs how the particles are affected by an electric or magnetic field. So, protons carry positive charge, while electrons carry negative charges, while neutrons have neutral charge or no charge at all. So, tatandaan, proton, positive electrons, negative, and neutrons are no charge at all. And at the same time, materials around us are generally neutral but may either become positively charged or negatively charged. Pag sinabi natin ito, balance. Okay? But it can become positively charged or negatively charged when they gain or lose electrons. So this topic is all about gaining and losing electrons. So the process of gaining and losing electrons is called charging. So hindi lang ito pag-charge ng cellphone, okay? But charging is basically the gaining and losing of electrons because electrons is the only moving part of the atom. So have you experienced the same as the picture on the right? The science behind that hair-raising experience will be explained through a simple activity in this learning material. So alam ko yung iba sa inyo, uh, you experienced already with this type of yeah, hair-raising or goosebumps type of uh, feeling. So, for example, I will give you a hint. Kapag nag-open kayo ng television, especially yung mga lumang television, that's the flat screen. Okay, so mga lumang television, you open it and then you turn it off. Pag-alapos nyo pa tayo yun, try nyo ilapit yung braso nyo doon. 
okay? So, para magkakaroon siya ng magic na ma-attract yung mga buhok mo dito sa braso, doon sa screen ng TV. Or sometimes, kapag nagsusuklay kayo ng buhok, especially sa girls, napapansin ko. Okay, so, pag nagsusuklay kayo ng buhok, then, when you put your comb far away from your hair, you will notice that some of your hair, especially sa girls, nag attract or na attract dun sa comb. Later on, you will know about those different types of charges. Okay? And marami na rin kayo nakikita ng eh, mga science exhibits na hindi nga tumataas yung buhok if they touch this one, right? So, we are going to deal with those different topics. So, remember that charges cannot be created nor destroyed. Charges are only separated in electrification or charging. So, it can be electrified or electrification or charging of the objects like friction. So, friction or rubbing is type of charging as well. So, kapag nag ka ng friction, kapag nag ka, so that's also charging na. Okay, so another thing is induction and conduction. An object can negatively charge when it means electrons. While an object does positively charge when it loses electrons. Okay, remember, the atom will become negatively charged if it gains electrons. Okay, it will become a positive charge when it loses electrons. Negative charge or nakapose ng electrons. Magiging positive charge naman po kapag nawala yung electrons. Yes? So like this one. So the other one will become positively charged and the other one will become negatively charged. Okay? So same as that. That is why charges cannot be created nor be destroyed. So for lesson number two, we are going to talk about different types of charging. So ano nga ba yung mga types ng charging na to. So, we are going to explain it one by one. So, what is a charge? So, a charge is a property of particles that make up of the atom an element. So, an element is equivalent to one atom. For example, an atom of hydrogen, an atom of helium is the same as an element of atom of hydrogen or an element of hydrogen. So, it's the same. Vice versa. You can use atom. You can use element. Because atom is equivalent to element. Okay? An atom is made up of electrons that carries a negative charge, as we said a while ago. Protons that carry a positive charge and neutrons with a neutral charge or no charge at all. So, for example, a seven object with an equal number of protons and electrons and it has a neutral charge. So, an excess of any of these particles determines the charge of the object. An object is said to be charged when it is either gains or loses electrons. So, for example, meron tayong atom A and atom B. So, si atom A, it loses electrons. Okay, so na-transfer yung electron ni atom A to atom B. So, we can say, therefore, that B gains electrons. So what happened is that atom B is now electric or negatively charged because it gains electrons. While atom A, since it loses its electron, what happened to atom A? It will become positively charged. So patandaan yan ha, since A, it loses electrons dahil nabawasan siya ng negative mas madami yung positive niya. Kaya siya naging positively charged. On the other hand, B or atom B becomes the negatively charged because it adds up the electrons. So, mas dumami yung negatively charged kay atom B kaya naging negatively charged si atom. Do you get it? Okay, very good. And uh, these are the different types of charging. Let us start with charging by friction. So we have here a neutral charge and then when we rub it, or neutral rub, rather, kapag nirub natin or pinriction natin, nag-cross tayo ng friction with these two objects, the PVC pipe or yung, sabihin na natin yung tubo na plastic. Yeah. So kapag in-scrub mo yan, from a neutral rub, 
to a neutral PVC pipe, what happens is that the neutral rod will become positive rod and then the PVC pipe will become negative PVC pipe. So what happens? We all know that in magnet magnetism, opposite repel or attract. Okay, what is the answer? Very good. So when you are talking about magnetism, positive and negative, they are opposite. So they will attract. Nakain din yan. So when they are when they have the same charges, it will repel. Positive and positive, it will repel. Negative and negative, it will repel. But if it has positive and negative, it will attract. Okay? So meaning to say, we charge already the neutral rod and then the neutral PVC pipe because it gains and loses its electron. Since naging positively charged ang rod natin dito at negatively charged ang PVC pipe, so the tendency is that they will attract to each other. Okay, so the transfer of electrons from one uncharged object to another by rubbing the two objects together because this is a close contact. Okay? Some electrons can move to the other object when rubbing. For example, like here and the balloon. Like this example. So kapag binag mo yung balloon na yan sa buhok mo, the other one will become negatively charged. The other one will become positively charged. That is why your hair, some of your hairs will attract to the balloon. Okay, so that's how the charging by friction happens. And then we have the second type of charging, which is all about charging by induction. So we have here negatively charged by and then we have here the positive sphere or metal sphere. So as you can see, electrons move within the object making the closest side oppositely charged. See, the other side become oppositely charged but they are not in contact with each other. So meaning to say, charging by induction where the charged object is brought near but never contacted the object being charged. Okay. You can see it here that they are not contacted to each other, but the other one have is being charged, and that is by induction. Okay, And the third one is charging by conduction. This one, as you can see, it has the closest or it has a contact to each other. Okay, So the negative charge, and then we have here the negative charge by and then the sphere, the metal sphere here, becomes negative as well because electrons transfer to the objects making it the same charge. So charging by conduction involves the contact of a charged object to a neutral object. So it is often called charging by contact. And this is an example of this charging. Okay. So when you touch this spherical ball, since it is very charged, so what will happen is that your hair will react. It will rise up okay and those are the three types of charging in this topic so always remember that a charge is a property of particles that make up the atom of an element an atom is made up of electrons that carries negative charge protons positive charge neutrons with neutral charge so remember if a seven object with an equal number of protons and electrons and it has a neutral charge so kung may sumobra dito at may nagkulang dito, that is when the time it will change its charge. Okay? Kapag nag-gain ng electrons, magiging negatively charged. Okay. Kapag siya nag-lose ng electrons, it will become positively charged. So an object is said to be charged when it either gains or loses its electrons. An object that loses electrons becomes positively charged while the object becomes negatively charged when it gains electrons. For example, metals usually carry loosely bound electrons, so they are known as conductors. Kaya madaling daluyan ng kuryente ang metal because they carry loosely bound electrons. It can easily be transferred. Okay? Kaya metals are good conductor of electricity. Kaya ang bilis ka, kapag ano, pwede kang electric yun. Okay? Pwede kang makuryente. Hindi ground ang tawag din ha. Electric cube. So, three ways to get charged. Another thing to remember. 
for objects like insulators, ito yung insulators naman, they are not the ones that uh, cannot conduct electricity. So, meaning to say, these are the stopper of electricity. Am I clear? So, for example, plastics, wood, rubber, at marami pa tayong insulator na ginagamit natin plus usually sa mga um, cooking wares. Okay? Sa mga electrical wires. At marami pa sa mga household uh, materials may kita niya at sa mga appliances niyo. So, they can get charged by rubbing or by friction. So, usually, yung mga plastic na yan, yung mga rubber na yan, they can be charged by friction or rubbing. So, for metals or conductors, where there are more loosely bound electrons, they can get charged without contact by induction. And the last one is for metals again, they can also be charged by direct contact by conduction. So we have charging by friction or rubbing, charging by induction, and then charging by conduction. So that's how you differentiate the three. And let us select the why lightning is important. So what comes first, lightning or thunder? Okay, so what comes first is that? Lightning. Okay, first lightning, then afterwards, thunder. Because light is faster than sound. So, laging ikidlat muna bago kumulog. Laging yung tatandaan niya. Remember that the speed of light is 300 million meters per second. So, gano'n kabilis ang lightning. At gano'n kabilis ang light. Okay, so it is important because without thunderstorms and lightning, the Earth atmosphere electrical balance would disappear in 5 minutes. And lightning also makes ozone-producing chemicals. Hindi siya nakakatulong sa pagpapakapal ng ozone layer, but it can help some ozone producing chemicals kasi everyday yung sisira yung ozone layer natin because of the direct heat of the sun. Okay? So, why lightning is important? Again, because in this topic, lightning is a very large electrical discharge that is caused by induction. Okay? Charges build up in storm clouds and they need a place to escape. So, the path of escape for these charges to discharge to Earth. So, ang lightning is caused by charging by induction. So, do not forget that. At kapag next time, makikita kayo ng lightning, it is a blessing rather than a curse. Okay? So, I hope you learned something today. And do not forget to answer these questions in your modules in our Google Classroom. For lesson number one, answer page three for the pretest and then page four. For lesson number two, answer pages five to seven and uh, pages 8 to 9 for the post -test. Okay, do not forget to picture it or take a photo of it and then uh, send it to your Google Classroom. Turn it in. And uh, if you have any clarifications or you need some questions, and do not be hesitant to ask, okay? You can reach me through my social media accounts, YouTube, or in, if your messenger is not that good, you can DM it to my Instagram, and then my Facebook page, okay? And that's the end of our quarter number three. So, tapos na yung third quarter natin, week number seven natin. So, let us be prepared for the fourth quarter next month. So, all you have to do is to finish everything and then submit everything. And do not forget to answer our summative test that is to be posted very soon. So, I hope you learned something today. Goodbye, God bless you, and have a nice day, everyone.